Again, it's Weekly Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, just stuff that we found personally interesting we want to share with you. Hopefully you'll find it interesting too. That rhymed, unintentional. Anyway, I'm Vin Stone. Uh, that is a slightly under the weather, Jill Bryant. Yeah. <laughs> and um, over there on our far right, it's one Pedro Mateus with a... Hello. What's that shirt say today? Nothing, uh, nothing a thousand volts can cure. All right. It's from Frank and Weenie. <laughs> Keep that man oh, away cool. from water. <laughs> um, so, Joe, why are you sick, man? Oh, What's up? I got the con flu, but I had a wonderful time at Open Source Summit San Diego, where I met lots of great developers from the Linux community, including from the Academy Software Foundation, Collabora, and the Risk Five Foundation. And I made contacts for future interviews here on LWW. So I'm looking forward to being able to interview some of the people I made contacts with. It was awesome. <laughs> man, a lot of people are going to have to change their email address, man. <laughs> 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 to chase them down and set some traps. Be like, hey, come here. What? Ah, give me your contact information. No. <laughs> Did you get any swag? Oh, yeah. I got tons of it, including the shirt I have on. And I love it. This year, the for the San Diego OSS Summit, it's really cute. It's a penguin holding a surfboard. Uh, that was adorable. <laughs> I'm down with it. it yeah. It's a bit more like non-monotone for my taste, but I, I, I could suffer through that. Yeah. <laughs> Pedro, have, have you enacted any like of your uh, powers recently? Uh, not a where that I had powers, but no, <laughs> actually this week, uh, I didn't really do anything much. I'm just waiting on Solivare to send me an email. So I was like, I want some boots. I want to buy her boots. Let me give you money. Okay. <laughs> you and Jordan made it. And it's like, Hey man, I want a pair of Solivare boots. Go to the web zone. Boom. Here, take my money. A week later, they sent me boots. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, apparently my, um, foot size is a very common one. So they're sold out. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just get get some that are too big. It'll be fun watching you like clown foot around. <laughs> Clop. Yeah. Clown shoes. <laughs> we, we could have a new thing like before the show on Saturdays. Chase Pedro. It'll be great. People come Aww. over and they'll chase you. You fall. Oh, All right. So uh I've been making videos, teaching people how to do stuff, and mm -hmm. that, that's just kind of what I do uh, when I have some free time, because LGC cares, baby. Uh, more on that at 11, but let's just get right into Benedict, not Cucumber Pickle, but <laughs> Cucumber Batch, but you know, you love him, Benedict Torvalds. Oh, on Sunday, August 25th, Linux turned 28 years old. Yay! 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 <laughs> <laughs> so Linus Benedict Torvalds asks, what would you like to see most in Minix with the announcement of his free operating system that is just a hobby, won't be big and professional like GNU, and the rest is history. And yes, I enjoy, I read this, uh, honestly, I read this every time uh, Linux's birthday comes up because it's a very important piece of history, that that Minix mailing list. Uh, that, that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and it's uh, now that we have uh, an operating system that actually runs <laughs> applications from other operating systems better mm -hmm. than those native operating systems ever did. It's very good to see. And we have a kernel that runs, well, it runs most of the world. It's like most of the world's phones running Android. That's a Linux kernel. Uh, most yeah. of the world's servers, like at least the top 500 most powerful servers out there are running Linux. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it runs the world. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, man. You know, uh, like watching this from way back in the day. It was legitimately a hobby OS uh, the first time I started playing with Linux. I mean, it was not an OS replacement. I had DOS that was fully featured, and it did everything I needed it to do. Um, mm. And it's went from, like, oh, I'll tinker with this thing. Oh, hey, everyone, everybody come over. To what? I got X working. Kind of. <laughs> the resolution's yes. all jacked up. But look, it launched. Um, there's eyeballs, but they're all misformed. But look, we made it work. Um, Aww. It's went from and you didn't that. burn out your monitor. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> RTSM. It's free 86. Man, I, I'm sorry you have so many burnout monitors. Um, no, I, I never. I was so very I've been careful. Able to, um, watch this <laughs> kind of go from this hobby thing into something that we're using right now. Oh, yep. yeah. You know, we're using mm -hmm. it to run the show, record the show, switch the show, stream the show, uh, video from Britannia, video from California, and. Mm -hmm. everything's rocking and rolling that's really impressive you know and 28 years later however i think, <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting you know because <laughs> we, we still have people desperate <laughs> to find an excuse not to run linux and i'm not talking yes. about my brothers and sisters out there who simply don't want to. Like, that's <laughs> not my thing, man. I don't care about an operating system. So put something in front of me. This is what I use. You know what? We're cool. Me and you, we don't have a problem. We can get along. We can go to the pub. I'm talking about, <laughs> what I'm talking about is the <laughs> never ending. And these people evolve decade after decade of, I would run Linux if blank. These are the yeah. people that, <laughs> that they want participation trophies. Yeah. They're like, yeah, man, I'm on your team, but I mean, I don't run it, but I would, man, you, cause <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. But, but we <laughs> like, man. Oh yeah. That uh, piece of software that I, it's the only thing I know how to use. Yeah. That doesn't work. So I can't use it. Yeah. <laughs> Or that game, right? <laughs> the but games, that's changing. Yeah, games are getting eradicated. And I, I yes. have a Linux search on TweetDeck for that sole reason of, man, Linux is really awesome. It's great. And I would run it, but this doesn't. It was like, oh, well, that runs just fine. I love doing it with like Bitvik or uh, like DAW software for audio. And I'm like, no, it's mm -hmm. got a Linux version here. Yeah. Poof, disappear. <laughs> um <laughs> That's that. That gives me the sads, man. I mean, you're not convincing anyone. I'm like, well, yeah, I run Linux on everything but my main computer. No one believes you. Okay, <laughs> not being mean, yeah. just being honest. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, but hey, maybe these 28 facts about Linux can uh, change your mind. No. <laughs> yeah. No, man. I, I only know 23 facts, and they're both ducks. Quack. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> quack quack <laughs> this is coming from red hat uh they're just like yo man we got a lot of stuff 28 of them linux isn't very useful alone neither is most kernels um yeah <laughs> he didn't actually announce linux it was not yet named he said a free operating system so well, all right we won on that it's not called foss aphos that's good thing. <laughs> Freaks. <laughs> Linux was going to be all right. Yes. Now, now I have the sad. That was yes. yes. That was the original name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Red Hat Enterprise Freaks. Are you kidding me? I'd pay extra for that. Um, <laughs> do we? Do either of you have any like highlights out of this list? Oh yes. <laughs> well, as you pointed out, Vin, um, I wanted a stuff Tuz a Tasmanian Devil Tux. Um, but to support the endangered species. That's exactly in... what we need, Jill. We need Tux looking like he belonged in Pulp Fiction. You know the part I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, so that was circa 2006, 2007 when that happened. And I I never got a hold of one of those uh, stuffed Tuzzes. But um, without Linux, of course, the social development platform Git would have never existed. And, you know, so many people, millions of people are using Git every day. And that's just amazing. And actually, I used, used, used to use Loadlin to boot Linux from DOS frequently. That was one of the first bootloaders for Linux. And I still have it installed on several of my machines behind me. <laughs> and, yep. uh, the, yeah, definitely. And then came Lilo, the Linux loader, which is still one of my favorite bootloaders of all time. I actually still prefer it over Grub, but of course Grub is king. But I still sometimes go back and install Lilo because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Grub's the default. And uh, one yeah. of the things that caught my eye was, were the uh, the Bogomips. It's like yes. point nine. It's like if you've been using Linux for a while, you may remember seeing a display about Bogomips when a system is booting. Mm -hmm. And this very <laughs> apt one sentence description of Bogomips Bogomips are a measurement of the number of million times per second a processor can do absolutely nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. best benchmark of them all. <laughs> so uh, I 
I just ran cat proc uh, CPU info. And it's like, oh, BOGO MIPS. So the uh, Xeon processor on my work laptop has a score of uh, 5808 BOGO MIPS. And the 3700X mm -hmm. on this box has a uh, BOGO MIPS score of 7186. So, yes. <laughs> Those numbers mean nothing. <laughs> yeah. I think a couple of highlights. Um, something that uh, they, they brought up here in like the... It used to take a minute to install. It used to take a minute to do pretty much anything on a computer. You know, we had IDE yeah. drives, and um, but it took a minute to install Linux. And they bring up a thing, Caldera, Open Linux, had ah, a yes. Tetris-ish like game that you could play while it was copying yeah. over. Yes. So during <laughs> this time, I never really worked with Linux professionally because I was dealing with Sun. Sun, it's like, I sorry, man, Sun. So it's like, yeah. here's a web browser. Go play. Yeah. I'm like, yes. <laughs> to give you an idea, because there was no game that would get in unless they had like Skyrim or something. <laughs> Takes a while to install Solaris. Uh the first oh, major yeah. movie to use Linux for CGI that um, was like noted was the Titanic digital yeah. domain. Used mm -hmm. a network of two hundred alpha machines running Red Hat Linux. Yes. Woohoo. <laughs> so it's been around, it's been fun, and uh, I feel like it's getting warmed up. There's really nothing you, you, you have to dig. It's what, you, you have to only run Adobe software and... Uh, use a bunch of gaming peripherals that require software for them to work as advertised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, they're That's all about like it. legitimate <laughs> things, man, because I've been looking for like a, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the stupid mouses, trackball mouses. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can you tell I'm excited about getting one? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a company that makes a 3D mouse, which mm -hmm. is it's like, oh, I can make that do things it's not supposed to for like a lot cheaper than buying like a control surface. And they're like, yeah, we, we made Linux drivers in 2014, but we're not going to do it anymore. So you do legitimately you run into run that. those off of the X input driver? No, these things have like 10 access. Uh, oh. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're made for like 3D CAD CAM stuff. And it's like, I can make that do something it's not supposed to. And uh, yeah. yeah, so there are edge cases, but I mean, it's good. But yeah, it's mostly it. peripherals that require specific software. Mm -hmm. the, that is... Those, uh, it's that and the Adobe software. It's like the last yeah. two. <laughs> and, and there's always a weird edge. Audio's down, video production, audio production, definitely audio production. But then again, I mean, if you're like locked into a particular program, you don't have an option. Like I said, yeah. I got, I feel as you on that. I've been there. Mm. But a lot of stuff you can do. And like hardware, hardware. Because before I bought these uh, 10 gig cards to link the uh, Threadripper to Jackbox, I watched a ton of videos on YouTube about people installing them in Windows 7 and Windows 10 and the nightmare of getting everything <laughs> set up and like, oh, it wouldn't work. And we had to change all these. Set. Click. Yep. <laughs> that was the solution yes. under Linux on two different. Plug yeah. and play. <laughs> that was it. Done. Boot. Nothing. <laughs> Give us an IP address. Give it a nut mask. We're on. And that was it. And, you know, the whole games argument, it used to be, oh, Linux doesn't have any games. Well, there's close to 12,000 uh. <laughs> games on Steam that work on Linux now, either natively or through Proton. That's almost an even split. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't care yeah. because it doesn't work with a trainer for the copy of the game I got from Pirate Bay. Be careful it does. <laughs> Enough of that, man. So, uh, the artist Adele, she's released uh, her own Linux distribution, right? Oh. Uh, well, it's French Adele. Uh, it's Adele. And uh, it's, yeah, uh, Adele Linux Beta 4 is currently uh, available. Uh, and you could go and download it, and you're thinking, oh, great, another distro. Well, this one does things a bit differently. Like, to the point where uh, even glibc is not glibc. They're using um, muzzle libc. So yeah, there's uh, mm -hmm. quite a few things that they do differently. And the big ones are, are like, they are a POSIX compliant distribution. Uh, and the goal is to support as much hardware with the available packages that they offer as possible. 
And that includes 32 and 64 bit Power PC and 32 bit x86, 64 bit x86, obviously, and uh, ARM 64. You can also get ARM v7 support, but it's uh, they don't consider it a first tier support because it's still missing some things. But they have managed to make uh, Firefox 68 uh, and uh, Thunder Chicken 68 work in power pc <laughs> yay it, it's like okay <laughs> that's that's impressive uh and they also claim that they've made their kde spin uh running plasma 5 and they say it uses only 384 megabytes of ram and all i have to ask about that because the phrasing isn't clear is that just for plasma or the whole session because if it's just for plasma mm-hmm. yeah i can do that too <laughs> that n- Ooh. Um, <laughs> what do you run this monstrosity of desktops? Jill, you got some thoughts. Oh, on that. oh yes, definitely. So I'm looking forward to playing with the distro on my 32 bit Power PC and 64 bit Power PC, IMAX, Power Max, and my G4 Cube, actually, right be right behind this monitor. I definitely wanna wanna get that distro on there. And I've already burned a live CD just for that purpose. And yes, it fits on a live CD because it is only 330 megs in size, <laughs> which is <laughs> awesome. And it it kind of needs to be to support the older hardware. <laughs> so so good on you. I Adelia. will have to try this on um, <laughs> the T42 just because yeah. the T42 has been running Lubuntu 1804 for so long. It's like, yeah, it works. <laughs> but try something different. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty decent. Uh it's nice. Uh, well, we need these. I mean, what do we have? Like Yellow Dog? Uh, is that even still around for a bunch of? The uh, that PPC? was a PS3 one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, mean, there's probably someone still actively developing for it. Yeah. Yeah. There's I'm always severe, a diehard. Pick a district. Yeah. Severely die hard. lacking in my hoarding skills, so I don't keep track. <laughs> but but I, I usually install Debian on most of them, so <laughs> it'll be nice go. to. That'll yeah. Be a thing. <laughs> and good of them. Uh, maybe put some screenshots. Of, like, what does it? I'm sure it's, it ships with what KDE, right? So. Uh, it has KDE, yeah. XFCE, LXQT, and something else. <laughs> there is another uh, desktop environment that they have. It's a new feature. Uh, TWM. <laughs> uh, TWM. Uh, yeah, the, the, it also has a couple of. Um, <laughs> All right. uh, Enlightenment. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we'll it should ship with <laughs> yeah. is XFC 414. It's out like a week ago. <laughs> we talked about it. But um, Simon, Simon's going to spit some mad logic around like, hey, why am I just getting around to this? Because uh, they had to make some up- updates to their web zone in order to put out updates, which I'm like, hey, man, good on you a lot. Uh, welcome, welcome to 2019. They aren't planning on getting everything back on track release schedule wise. For 2020, you know, they're going to try to stick to that six month release cycle, taking away several of my favorite jokes made at XFC's expense about 2034. <laughs> he does bring up um, a couple of things. Don't expect Waylon. Do not expect uh, GTK4. Yeah. Not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Also, as I mentioned, you know, like, you know, hashtag feeling cute, might switch to GitLab later. That's something that uh, they're thinking about doing. And, uh, Good on that lot. I mean, they got it out the door. They got it out the door when they said they would. And instead uh-huh. of be like, we'll see you next decade. Uh, instead of doing that, we've walked into, okay, let's get a real release cycle and stick to it. Yeah. Which, that will be interesting, mm-hmm. though it will probably also make it, you know, the not going anywhere XFC for that just works no matter what. There's bound to be some bumps along a six-month release cycle. <laughs> there could be. I know Katana left a thing in there. It said uh, it's already landed in Debian testing uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the panel and settings for now. And I did see, I, I played with it on uh, Debian 10 earlier this mm-hmm. week. There's yeah. a repo in my version. I was like, yeah, okay, it doesn't, I can't tell any, which I'm, this, I'm singing praises, <laughs> by the way. Couldn't really tell any difference. I'm like, I like that. And nothing seemed to crash, but... I rolled back to 412 just so I know who to blame if something dies, you know? <laughs> Everything's mm. got to be old and stale in here. Aww. So, 
<laughs> yeah, I I run uh, Fedora with XFC on the work laptop because yeah, it, it, it's got a Xeon and a Quadro in it. So what am I gonna run? XFC. Yeah, uh, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, and for that use case of just having like a laptop plugged to a couple of monitors, yeah, the even the um, built-in compositor now that it uses GLX, mm-hmm. it works. Perfectly. Uh, I even did like mm-hmm. the tearing test. There's a YouTube video that like tests staring at 60 FPS. It's like put that in full screen and Pedro's check to see if there's any the tearing. white and black line video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, white and black yeah. lines just going left and right. Mm. Yes. <laughs> if there's any tearing, that video will see it. You can also see ghosting. These two monitors mm-hmm. are very guilty of that. <laughs> Yeah, well, congratulations to Simon Steinbeis and his team for a great stable release. So it's it's been getting really good reviews, and I am looking forward to using it. Yeah, it's going to be great um, on Debian 11. I'm sure, I, I, you know, I'm new to Debian, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be out in like, what, five or six months, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> no. Years, maybe? Years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Debian, hey, Debian has and... stuck to their release cycle. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, so this is Enlightenment 23. So one of my favorite window managers has a new release. Enlightenment is now version 23. And the Enlightenment Foundation Libraries based Rage Video Video and Media Player gets upgraded in the E23 release. And lots of improvements to Wayland since being used as the compositor for almost two years, which is awesome. It was one of the first to go with Wayland. And as I've talked about before on LWW, some of the reasons I love this desktop so much is because how memory efficient and fast and nimble it is for being so beautiful. It lives in terms of size and memory efficiency between the classic X window managers like Fluxbox and Window Maker and a full desktop environment like XFCE and GNOME. So it's it's really, you know, I used it for several years um, for all, all the time, all the time for several years. And now I still go back and forth between it and Flexbox and Window Maker because it's it's one of an XFCE because it's still one of my favorites. Yay. The only problem, <laughs> well, I have two problems with Enlightenment. One, um, it, it's too flashy for me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, I love it. It's pretty. <laughs> too much whiz bang stuff going on. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I can live with that if I can, because I mean, it's a smaller footprint than XFC by a bit. And yeah. Yep. <laughs> but it has a conniption fit when I launch OBS with all the uh, windows and oh, stuff that I pulled up. Yeah. So it mm-hmm. didn't deal with that very well. I tried to use it. I mean, it's great. It's been around forever, though. Yeah. yeah. And I even used version 19 uh, on the calculator that laptop I used to use when I first started doing the show. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it, basically it was the one that gave the better uh, performance with the uh, open source AMD graphics. The compositor is yes. more performant mm-hmm. than Compton. Mm-hmm. Yes, oh, definitely. However, mm-hmm. it is not as stable as XFC. No, no, yeah. it's not. No. <laughs> and you can and, tell when it crashes because yeah. everything goes dark. It's like, oh, God, what happened? <laughs> then it comes back. Oh, there was a crash. <laughs> womp, womp. Uh. <laughs> yeah. The other cool thing is with Enlightenment 22, they really increased the ES driver, the Enlightenment sound driver. So it, it was it was much better in that release. So I'm hoping Enlightenment 23, it'll be even better. Mm. Yep. Mm. Good to see. I mean... Enlightenment has always been there. Like, I'd like to run you, and every time I try it, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool, though. Uh, Chromebooks, it's been a minute since we've talked about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and there haven't really been any, like, flashy new Chromebooks coming out, and the ones that already exist, well, they've been getting some Linux apps. Uh, we've talked about the uh, Linux app compatibility later uh, that they introduced a couple of versions ago, and, well, uh, it still doesn't support uh, graphical acceleration, which means if you're trying to play games, like installing Steam and then launching a game on it, I hope you like two, perhaps three frames a second, because no. that's all you're getting. <laughs> hang, hang, hang on a minute, hot stuff. Uh, you're, you're saying that, but isn't this for education and enterprise? It is, uh, so and that's one of the things that was missing. Uh, no, you, you just named a feature. 
for education <laughs> and enterprise. Like, oh, it doesn't play games? Oh, no. Whatever yes. will we do? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't play games. But one of the things that was missing uh, from the Chrome OS um, Linux compatibility layer was the ability to remotely manage it. If you have a, like, a business that is using Chromebooks and you have the remote management enabled, you can pick which features to use. And basically the Linux feature, if you were running in that environment, was just not there. Well, now you can enable it mm. for specific people, obviously. Uh, and it, let's say if you have someone who really wants to use GIMP, go ahead and uh, load that up on the, uh, that actually works pretty well. I mm -hmm. would probably stay away from like VLC or MPV because yeah, that needs a little bit of GPU acceleration uh. and they do, they don't do that <laughs> yet at all, but yeah, mm -hmm. it is, it is a very good thing to see. And now you can use it even if you're in a, in a remotely managed business environment. It's pretty good. I mean, Aww. you would have to imagine that if awesome. you're having to use GIMP on a Chromebook that you've uh, really upset someone in management. <laughs> no. yeah it's like so don't you have access to the play store <laughs> sure. oh well since the insight of project christini i was excited by the fact fact that this meant that thousands of school children would be introduced to linux apps the gimp text paint the console and other educational software so i think this is really going to be good for the classroom so this is this is awesome Bring open source and Linux apps to the world. I look forward to the comment of you just want to indoctrinate children to the monster that is Google. Oh, <laughs> well, good good teachers will know that this is not those apps aren't Google. <laughs> so. Still, man. I mean, we think uh, like uh, who was it in uh, in our Discord? Uh, was it Massive? Uh, not mm -hmm. I feel. Uh, Educational system in Australia, they're like, you can't use any Google services, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's also true in Germany. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And now true. Microsoft is also in the bin. And Apple, uh, well, they're falling out of favor very quickly as well. <laughs> kind of knock, knock some of the, uh, I don't know, total functionality out of a Chromebook if you can't connect to... Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. not necessarily, yeah. because you won't be able to connect to any of the Google services, so you won't be able to remotely sync it, like, mm -hmm. say, you log in with your account, but you could have a local account, and you could, in theory, just enable developer mode and install this is, Chromium. <laughs> yeah. this is exactly what you want to do in an enterprise or educational system. You're like, well, listen, if we mess around with it a lot, it's a turnkey solution, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, it's better than Windows XP, which I know for a fact that the NHS mm -hmm. around here is still paying for that support. <laughs> well, you know what? Honestly, I'm glad somebody is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what? Let's say uh, you don't like bright lights shining in your face. Love it. Chances Can't get are... enough of it. I need to be outside right now staring <laughs> you... <laughs> at the hurdy pain bowl in the sky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, chances are you also don't want to be doing a podcast with all the monitors set to white background so you have some light going. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Then you get spotlights and stuff and put them over your head where it's more yeah. bright. Just for fun. <laughs> But this is a little tool that if you don't have those constraints set upon you, you can load. You can just build it or just download one of the uh, already pre-built releases. And what it does is it adjusts the gamma. And it is aptly named Gammy. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, it adjusts the gamma uh, depending on the um, contents of your screen. Let's say you have a window with a white background. Uh and it goes, okay, let's lower the gamma on that uh, on that display. And it lowers it to, like, avoid some eye strain. Uh, if you have a really dark background or the, you're watching something that's really dark, it'll bump up the gamma a little bit. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. this has the nice nasty side effect that if you have any kind of uh, color accuracy in mind, you can forget about that because... This is changing the gamma on the fly as it detects changes in what, like, the main brightness is of each window. So it's like, this in Redshift, mm -hmm. for me, nope. Mm -mm. 
hey, not having it. <laughs> my first thought was, does, does this one work as well as it? Uh, yeah, uh, the automatic brightness <laughs> on Android. Because if it does, is it going to make things real slow and it's never going to work right? Uh, it's slightly different because on Android, yeah. it actually uses the display backlight. Uh, it it can also do the gamma adjustment depending on the phones and how it's doing it. But it's usually the just the display backlight that changes. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. See, I use the life hack of setting all the monitors to as low as they will possibly go. <laughs> yeah, these yes. are at 50%. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my big 43 maybe. is. <laughs> my, my big 43 is at uh, 10 right now. <laughs> 10? <laughs> or, or it would be 10% or it would be on my face. If I had this application, I, I could see it's yours. The only thing I would use it for is like <laughs> I would have Raver, Ravercorn video on loop just to watch it flip out. <laughs> <laughs> then we get bored with it but hey man somebody might find a yeah. use for it uh yeah you can set like like the monitor thing that's just not something i want changing yeah i really don't yeah. want my colors changing around which is why i don't get people who use redshift especially yeah. artistic people who have like their laptops <laughs> with their awesome ips screens it's like oh really almost 100 percent rgb3 compliant and then they install Redshift. Why? Yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> How dare you question their arti art artism? <laughs> Artisanal? No, that's something no, else. Artisanal. Yeah. <laughs> There's places I could go with that, but this is a family show, so I'm not. Um, oh, yeah. No, I can't say yeah. that on yeah. Wednesdays. Nope, nope, nope. nope. <laughs> Abort, eject. <laughs> Let's get back to talking. Uh, I felt this kind of neat. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Then, then I fell in love with it because, like, uh, it's just called nice. USB top because everything's mm -hmm. top. It, you know, top top, H top, net top, tip top, USB top. <laughs> That's <laughs> made for it, right, man. They nailed Nvidia it. Nvidia top. <laughs> now this might surprise you. It's a top like CLI utility. Oh, what, what does it do though? Helps you find a USB device bandwidth usage. It's like that. While probably not something a ton of people would ever be interested in, those who are like, where's this bit all of my life? Um, you know, this could have been real handy when I had the gang of uh, USB 3 encoders mm. plugged in, trying to figure yeah. out which <laughs> port had the bandwidth left in it. Even on a Threadripper, that could be a bit dodgy because it was a carp shoot, 100% uh, to get that sorted out. And that was just a bunch of on and off again testing, but it opens up, gives you your device IDs, and it gives you, you know, Coming in, going out, and it's really just that, which, yep. again, the vast majority of people probably completely disinterested in this. But this is one of those things that, hey, it's kind of neat, man. Don't, don't you mm -hmm. want to know how many data bits that wireless gerbil of yours is sucking down? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just a, a teeny tiny little dongle or this camera that's currently plugged in. How exactly. many uh, bits is it taking in? Or whatever you hit a keystroke this this is the thing that uh kind of sold it for me single keystroke on the keyboard it's like oh there it is oh, yeah there it is. <laughs> yeah and I, I think it's cool that you can also monitor your mics and dacs as well mm -hmm. so usb mics or a uh, dac at mic to xlr through the dac so that's pretty cool through usb really it's awesome definitely <laughs> a thing <laughs> Go play with it. All this is going to be in our show notes. Um, after the fact, there'll be a link in video description if you're like this, one of the six people that watches it. We have a video version, by the way, if you're listening, which most of you are. It's on the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So I decided to move everything over to Debian 10, and which means that I'm like, how do I get this up and running? Which I know one of the first questions I'm going to get, because I'm about to tell you how to get um, DaVinci Resolve. That's my new thing. I'm playing with it. Uh, mm -hmm. up and working on WD. I'm like, why didn't you do that for Fedora? Because it's built to run on scent. <laughs> there's really, there's no installation process other than you tap that next button a few times, fam, and you're good. But uh, if you want to do the same, WD10, it's a lot like, uh, this is something that you could apply to your uh, Ubuntu's, Mints, anything like that. And get everything set up. It's really simple. I mean, it's just a matter of adding, you know, your contrib and your non-free getting your NVIDIA drivers installed and tracking down this stupid CUDA thing because mm -hmm. if you don't have that linked properly... It no. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fair yeah, Debian infusion. folder structures. Aren't they great? Yes. Yeah, yes. That, that's definitely a thing. And we use uh, make deb resolve to... 
take all that nonsense together and it's a piece of cake. It works. It's got a brilliant and it's ridiculously stable. More stable than it ever thought Yay. about being on Fedora 30. That's not a knock on mm -hmm. Fedora. That's not going to DaVinci because it's built with a hacked together version of Scent that it barely runs on if you look at it correctly. That is like the officially supported one. Yeah, I got a lot of smack to talk about DaVinci. Like Fairlight, that's a joke on Linux. Mm. Why, why is that even <laughs> there? Let me use my VST plugin. Let me use a control surface. I'm like, no. I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Well, you could buy this $30,000 thing. We and are yeah. you really? <laughs> that's what they want. <laughs> that's a bit of an ask, man. But uh, mm -hmm. that will get you up and running, installed, uh, haven't had it crash, and it's good to play around with, uh, even if you're just curious. And, you know, if not, we still got uh, Katie and Live, go play with that. Blender's got a video editor at it, but they don't admit it. And um, <laughs> <laughs> don't go looking for it. You'll be lost to the ages. And they finally dropped a game engine, though. <laughs> they yeah. did. So they, they needed more room for the video editor. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. It, it, it's perfectly, it's like Vim, man. Vim can do a lot of stuff. That you're like, why is that in there? But you're like, hey, man, if you're already in Blender, might as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you need to do 3D compositing uh, with uh, video editing, it's a perfect way to do it. <laughs> it can do it. I'll give it that. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh hey we we uh, haven't had a minute to talk about this uh yeah but, oh, come oh on. yes it's the end of the news segment it's called uh da, da, da. <laughs> microsoft, microsoft loves, 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 loves linux, linux. <laughs> yeah, <baby. laughs> so ju just today microsoft announced its support for the x fat extended file allocation table file system in the linux kernel Yay! So now our XFAT formatted USB drives and SD cards will live in proper harmony in Linux. And, you know, it was Real only a matter of time. Have curves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was only a matter of time before this would happen. And truthfully, all my flash drives and SD cards, I always, can, I always format to EXT4 because <laughs> I'm a Linux user. <laughs> So NTFS, seriously, yeah. if you have a flash drive that you're going to be passing around to like Windows people, yeah. first of all, load it with viruses. They love that. Uh, second, use NTFS. Just, just yeah. use NTFS. It is better, yes. <laughs> this doesn't look outwardly malicious. And no, no, no. We, we were talking about uh, on Saturday's show, you know, about Microsoft's management structure with the teams, and they all have guns pointed at each other. So you can never mm -hmm. really tell. There are people that genuinely want open source to succeed with Microsoft, and then there's other teams that are like rar. So th that's all they do. And they're like, what, what's your title? Yeah. And they, they just go rar. You're like, oh, you're one of those. <laughs> and when <laughs> Microsoft released those patents a couple of months back. Uh, I did point out that there was one particular patent that they were holding on to, and mm -hmm. I wasn't the only one to do it. The internet as a whole went, hold on a second, where's the XFAT patent? <laughs> XFAT. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they, that's the patent that Microsoft has been using for years to uh, extort money out of Android, to extort money out of Linux, to extort money out of just about everyone else who even looks at the um, attribution file system wrong uh and i'm glad mm -hmm. that they're finally at a point where they don't feel the need to nickel and dime people with that stupid patent good on you microsoft good on you <laughs> you're working on it man i mean there's <laughs> definitely a large chunk of microsoft that realizes that hey man we we get to turn into a services company yeah <laughs> yeah Th this is our future it's not selling operating systems mm-hmm I can't yeah. imagine that Windows on the desktop is that big a profit for them. I honestly don't mm -hmm. know why they're still charging a license for that. Well, they effectively yeah. let you have it for free nowadays because you can get the trial version, non-activated version, and it will happily just keep running. It never... Yeah, yeah they it, never it has it. a little stupid watermark, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you can still use it. Mm -hmm. and yeah. People still do. No, no, it's fully functional. It just has the watermark. You can't change your background. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Well, you can. <laughs> you just replace the default file with 
With the, you're yeah, one. you go into you're the pigs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pay for your software, you pirates. Um, <laughs> that's brilliant. Uh, don't, don't screw it up is all I can say. He says, he says yeah, no, this is a good optimistic. move. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, before we get into the slice of pie, uh, we need to thank, uh, actually, we need to thank somebody that we don't, none of us really know. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, uh, it's, especially not that person no. over there. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh-uh. So, <laughs> Jelly Bean, otherwise known as my brother, <laughs> has it, it increased his Patreon pl- wait, 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 wait a minute. Does this, is that what it says on his government ID card? Jelly Bean, otherwise known as my brother. Chill's brother. No. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so he is now one of our sea monsters at the sea monster level. <laughs> Thank you so oh, he much. Gave us a dollar. <laughs> yeah, a true it's kind of brilliant. Uh, that's how we pay our bills. We put out everything for free. It's like a weird free ma- freeware model. And like, hey, if you like it, it, speaks a lot to the character. The uh, everyone kicking us a few shackles every week. That's yep. brilliant. We put it to good use, and hopefully, you like the end product. You know, you know, like. Keep on keeping on and support those mm-hmm. who support Linux. If you're like, I don't like your Yahoo's, go find somebody that you do because mm-hmm. nobody's, I mean, we're just, I just can't bring myself to like throw ads on everything, man. It was like, hello, well, let, let's say, let's talk about mattresses and try to try to embed it. Like, uh, how do we tie this in? Do you ever watch a <laughs> yes. YouTube video that does that? You're like, what? Let's right? spend uh, five minutes at, you know, in the mm-hmm. middle of the video explaining to you why this mattress is great. No, yeah. <laughs> that's where I immediately either I go looking in the nav bar. It's like, okay, when's the next? Where does it end? Okay, there we go. Or My, I click away from the video. <laughs> to, to be honest, well, this is where you've ended up with like native advertising. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have YouTube Red because if you can give me an option where I don't have to watch ads, I'll give you money. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really easy. All right, we're done with that. But it's always like in the first 10 minutes, right? Or the first five yeah. minutes. Mm-hmm. You just skip that part of the video. Yeah. It, if you do that, you miss us randomly talking about what's going on in our life. So it might yes. be win-win. It might, you know, <laughs> might still be a good strategy. Uh, we have Patreons, 114 of you. You guys are awesome. We have um, Libra Pay. We got Wish Zones. That's the thing. Uh, if you want to help us hack and get ahead of the game with the hardware stuff, uh, you can end up on Frank's Wall. Nasty place. You don't want to be there with those miscreants uh, financing this horrible <laughs> stuff. And uh, Humble Bundle, a mm-hmm. bunch of affiliate links and stuff like that. Uh, keep us going each and every week, letting us do all this on Linux and hopefully inspiring just one, possibly two people and be like, I can do a better job. And they will. That's how this started because I saw somebody mm-hmm. and I was like, I can do a better job. Turned out I couldn't, mm-hmm. but it's, <laughs> you got to try. You got to try, baby. <laughs> Let's get into a slice of pie, right? Wait, <laughs> slice of pie in a jar? Cinnamon mm-hmm. peach pie. It's alcohol, like the would recommend. IPA? Cinnamon peach IPA. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay. Hulk hooligans. Ooh, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is the Raspberry Pi, and it's a little article from Z- uh, ZDNet uh, about the Raspberry Pi 4. Two months in and what we've learned so far. And, well, uh, Mm -hmm. what a lot of people learned was that the USB Type-C connector on the Raspberry Pi 4 is not compliant to the spec. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, uh, The author of the article uh, says that he has bought uh, one of each, one of the 1 gigabytes, 2 gigabytes, and 4 gigabyte versions. And he put them all in different cases so he could immediately recognize them, and he has been trying to use them uh, as like a desktop computer uh and it's uh his views on it were actually not too bad it's still slow obviously Mm. and it's still a bit limited Mm. but it is much better than even the raspberry pi 3 was so especially the four gigabyte version so yeah that's very good to see uh, so you just plug it into a relatively high resolution screen and all of a sudden you have everything uh yeah and uh one of the things he brought up was the at the end uh where was it oh he talks a lot about uh some of the changes uh that they made to which applications are pinned to the panel it's like it's a raspberry pi most people aren't even looking at the panel 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he did make a very good um he was very adamant that yes, if they are pushing this as a desktop computer, and that was certainly a part of the original marketing, uh it is it it does need to have a little bit of care put into that. And that's fair enough, I guess. <laughs> That's a pretty interesting review. Yeah. Uh, my advice on that, if you didn't get round one of the Pi 4s, wait, like I am doing. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. have one if <laughs> they weren't immediately sold out. Like I I want a 4 gig version. Wanted. Yes. And so, uh, you know, I was like, well, make sure you have just the right USBs. I don't want to deal with any of that. Rev to them. Yeah. Give yeah. us the proper Type-C. Yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or... You know, just just get the kinks worked out of it, and you yeah. know, I, I, you're gonna get what, what you're gonna get for you know that price. So yeah, you're not really. I mean, in a pinch, you could use it around a desktop, but that's not the intended purpose. Yeah, I'm still curious because he he didn't uh, test it with 4K monitors. He tested it with two 1080p monitors, mm -hmm. and he said one of the things that he had to do was uh, get a uh, dongle because the 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 two HDMI mini ports are too close together, which I assumed that would be an issue. <laughs> so you'd yeah. have to get a little dongle <laughs> to do that. But he didn't test it with 4K, so I'm, that's what I'm curious about. <laughs> well, I mean, supposedly it's HD. HDMI too, right? <laughs> yeah, HDMI two. Well, out, yeah, just plug it in. But it works. I was curious. I was curious though how it would drive the video and everything. How, how that would yeah. all. There's yeah. no reason. I, um, <laughs> should be able to do that but don't use both yeah. of them those no the well that's the thing yeah <laughs> what is <laughs> well you don't want to have uh you don't want to be playing video probably of two h uh, ultra hd uh monitors on there <laughs> that's one take probably on get it. some sluggish <laughs> my take is don't use both of them because they're redundant <laughs> when, when you break that first one you have to take two because you're gonna break that first one <laughs> uh, yeah i guess so <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you've reinforced your Pi HDMIs and uh, you want to tell us about it and the journey and adventure that you went on. Mm -hmm. okay, you yeah. could absolutely that. tell us about yeah. that uh, mountain of hot glue and how exactly it appeared on top of your desk by going to LinuxGameCast.com, hitting the contact button and filling out the form. Make sure the show that you send to is LWDW, since that is uh, where the feedback for this very show uh, lands. Eh, well, a hot glue is best glue, I'll agree with you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, the best way to get in touch with us. Of course, if you're a Patreon, you feel free to uh, leave us a comment on Patreon. Uh, on YouTube, you can totally leave us a comment there. Uh, I... Every now and then, I check for new Pe comments to you see. Can, you've been guaranteed that Pedro will check it and not reply. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, <laughs> I will read them all. Probably won't say anything, but I will read them all. <laughs> I, I've like that's part of my system now. It's like, well, let's just go to the community tab because <laughs> that's how it rock and rolls. Uh, Corbin threw a little thing over Mastodon because we have one of those. Uh, we all have mm -hmm. accounts. Uh, he's talking about some hoops, man. He was talking about, because I made a little video, I was like, hey, you want to play with that stupid Da Vinci thing I keep talking about ad nauseum? If you're going to use the light version, one of the restrictions is it doesn't work with MP4 and MP3 files under Linux. is like a weird restriction. I'm like, hey, this is how you do it. And he wants to know how fast and slow is the DNX HD detour? And is it then a better format to edit in? Well, you probably do want to edit in an uncompressed format, you know, be it ProRes or uh, DNX HD, and rather, why jump through these hoops for DaVinci versus KDN Live, OpenShot, LightFox, <laughs> ASO? I mean, um, LightWorks, hoops, you sure you want to break that argument? <laughs> hey man, LightWorks <laughs> can import MP4, just can't save to it. Yes. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, um, I'm gonna do like this. This is for me. This was the oh, okay. I'll deal with everything else. Is the difference between 90 minutes to render out LGC Weekly? We're talking just the render time. We're not talking about all the time I'm saving about being able to stick it together. 90 minutes to do that with KDN Live, and I'm not dogging on KDN Live. I've said nothing but positive things about it. With a Threadripper, you know, 
24 threads, 32 gigs of RAM, rolling many minutes. The first time I converted, now I, I like after the show, I'm going to have to wait like 15 to 20 minutes to convert that out until I finally open up the company wallet and spend. This is difficult for me to do. <laughs> Give uh, some coin to resolve, which I need to now, but I got to wait for that conversion. I'm like, well, it's 20 minutes different. Then mm-hmm. I render out the episode in eight minutes. Even, is pretty big. even <laughs> with the poop I have to jump through, there's this <laughs> staggering gap of, and we're not talking, we're talking high res, 1080p 60, rendered for YouTube. And then with having the accelerated timelines, I'm sure Jill knows as well as I do, there's a thing in KDN Live to like pre-render effects and stuff <laughs> so you can watch them. Yeah. That's not in DaVinci Resolve because it's all hardware accelerated. Yeah, <laughs> in real can, time. <laughs> yeah, you can do your color grading and stack everything up in your VX. Again, their audio stuff, Fairlight, I think it's junk. So you're going to mind what it's worth. But yeah, that's that's why. That time save of like stuff I can be doing and apply yeah. effort in other mm-hmm. places other than hurry up and wait. Yeah. <laughs> that's that. Mm-hmm. Okay, next up we have Jolly. And apologies if this has been brought up before in another episode, but I'm still catching up. Now, I'm sure Jill would rather have an eBay wish list for her favorite antiquities, but yeah, <laughs> does she have an Amazon wish list? Jill? Yeah. <laughs> I do. It's just not on LGC yet. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it was eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She doesn't want anyone to see what's on it, A. <laughs> yeah, I, but, talk to Jill. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Jill just needs to get give Fen that link. It's like, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> do they have a wish list for eBay? Yes, they do. Uh, they do. And how does yeah. that work? I really want this one thing in the next nine hours. Um. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I've mostly used it for buy it now. Like me and my husband have uh, shared our, our wish lists. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, that's not, well, it depends sometimes on eBay. You can get a pretty good deal. I, I think, Pedro, you're more of a fan of like bid sniping ish, right? You're like, this is what I'm willing to pay for it. Yeah, no, I just set the maximum <laughs> bid and this is there <laughs> oh man they took all the fun out of it with bit butler remember when that came out yeah i know don't worry i'm not oh. gonna go into this <laughs> yeah we gotta get out of here uh get off our lawns it's been brilliant i want to thank everybody mm-hmm. for showing up um we're gonna roll some credits Same indeed time. yay yay we did it again <laughs> <laughs> thank you vince stone thank you pedro mateus and thank you, Jill. You can say it yourself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's our thing now. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> and thank you to all our lovely uh, executive producers, producers, and everyone else who uh, throws, you know, be it a little bit of money or a little bit of hardware every now and then, or even just people who share. Just share the show put it on twitter every Aww. now and then it makes a big difference thank you all very very yeah. much yeah yeah uh, thank you for the thumbs up army. <laughs> thank you for the thumbs up <laughs> the comments the hearts on twitter it's it's all awesome we'd love you Something. ah there's frank oh, wrong show <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah don't forget to Yay. like and subscribe yes <laughs> smash that bell fam <laughs> as art theron would say 